Do you remember trick-or-treating as a kid and being warned that the candy might be poisoned? That there were needles in the candy or there were razor blades in the apples? Oh, you don't remember that because you're not very old like I am and you have your whole life ahead of you? Great. I'm very happy for you. And for those that remember, a lot of this is urban legend and was widely talked about in the media, especially in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Most people enjoy having trick-or-treaters come to their doors. But there are a few people who will do things to hurt kids. They might put sharp or hard objects in candy and apples. Or they might put something on fruit or gum that could make you sick if you eat it. And statistically, it was a lot of things that happened around Halloween and it became this folklore that it happened because of poison candy. And not to say there's not people out there that thought about doing it or have tried to do it or have done it. But as far as the panic, it is really just urban legend. And one of the examples of something that actually happened was a real murder and became known as the man who killed Halloween or the candy man killer. But before we get into that, you know what we have to do. You know what we have to do at this point. We have to serve the album. Subscribe for more true crime, weird history, paranormal, give this video a like. And this is an episode we did on the podcast I co-host Ghost Town. You can find a link in the description below and hundreds of other episodes just like it waiting for you for free right now. Halloween night on October 31st, 1974 in Deer Park, Texas. It was cold and misty. It was raining that day. But eight-year-old Timothy O'Brien and his five-year-old sister Elizabeth were determined to go trick-or-treating. Their father, Ronald Clark O'Brien, was watching over his children as they went from house to house looking for candy. With them were two other minors and their father, Jim Bates. Eventually, they came upon a house that did not have a single light on. Of course, that didn't stop the children, and they tried their luck and banged on the door. Not getting an answer, the children moved on together with Jim, but Ronald remained behind. When he caught up with the others less than a minute later, Ronald had good news. Someone had come to the door and handed him a handful of 21-inch tubes of powdered sweet and sour candy called Pixie Sticks. Remember Pixie Sticks? No? Okay, I'll move on. Ronald gave each of the children one tube, and another to a 10-year-old boy Ronald had recognized from the church as they walked home. At 9 p.m., Ronald told Timothy and Elizabeth they could have one piece of candy before bed. Timothy picked out a sucker, but his father said, No, no, you don't have time to eat a sucker. Here, try this pixie stick. Immediately, Timothy complained about the weird bitter taste of the candy, which Ronald helped him wash down with a glass of Kool-Aid. Within moments, Timothy experienced severe stomach cramps and violently vomited in the bathroom before going limp in his father's arms. Ronald called for an ambulance, but unfortunately, Timothy died on the way to the hospital less than an hour later of eating the pixie stick. Timothy's autopsy revealed he had been poisoned with potassium cyanide with a dosage high enough to kill two adults. Fortunately, the authorities were able to recover the remaining pixie stick from the two other children before they were consumed. And at first, everyone thought there was an evil plot to kill the children in the neighborhood. But the man living in the house where Ronald claimed to have gotten the pixie stick had a solid alibi the suspicion quickly changed to Ronald himself. The police discovered he had recently taken out a $30,000 life insurance policy on both of his children and had debts of over $100,000. When it was found out that Ronald had called the insurance company about collecting on his son's policy just the day after Timothy's death, authorities felt they had a solid case against him. Ronald was arrested on November 5th, 1974, and was charged with one count of capital murder and four counts of attempted murder. He claimed to be innocent, but was eventually found guilty on June 2nd, 1975, and sentenced to death. Right after midnight on March 31st, 1984, the 39-year-old Ronald O'Brien was executed by lethal injection. The testimony came from Jimmy Bates, a close friend of the O'Brien family. Bates said that before Halloween, O'Brien asked if he could bring his children over to trick-or-treat with the Bates children on Halloween night. Both families ate dinner together, and then the fathers took the children trick-or-treating. Bates said O'Brien went to one house where no one appeared to be home, and after the children had scampered ahead to the next house, O'Brien came off the front porch carrying the pixie sticks. He gave the pixie sticks to the children and then later took them back and said he wanted to stop at his car for a moment. Bates said when O'Brien came back into the Bates house, he returned the pixie sticks to the children. Later that night, Timothy O'Brien died from eating a poisoned pixie stick. It's what? What the witness? 
no picture. And even though this case was targeted against his own children and his children's friends, that created the urban legend and the widespread panic of Halloween candy being poisoned. So Ronald Clark O'Brien, or Candyman, the man who killed Halloween, beside being a horrible person, ruined Halloween for everybody. And O'Brien's own lawyer said, my client was convicted of killing Halloween. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great Halloween, no matter what you do. Be safe. Check out more videos. Here's a video of the movie Halloween. I checked out some of the filming locations. And if you have a cool Halloween costume, let me know in the comment section below. I'm going as someone with a low credit score.